H sweep. This is removed. C O. Okay. How about here? It's a little complicated. You have H, and then you this O. You go here, and you have C H, C H three, and you have C O O. And here, you know, is H hydroxy H two O H. Here is H C H two O H. This structure is an azetomyramic acid. How they connected? <coughs> this H comes out. This O. This H goes here. Have another one right here. They are connected with this one four glycosidic bonds. Okay. Now, what's going to be the difference between this one and that one? This is the free polymer. So the O will be here. Okay? Then you go here. This will be H, CH2, OH. Then will be H, OH. Then go here. It will be H. This will be N, H2, C, CH3. And then have the oxygen. Now, what is that structure? This right here is an acetylglucosiamine. And this chain could be long and long. And this could be going here. This is a chain. Goes this way. So that's what we say. Modify the sugar. They connect it. Look at the top. They connect it. OK, what is amino acid? Another question. We need to know the basic structure of amino acid. This is the basic structure of amino acid. Is that correct? If you forget. What is the NH amino group? What is COOH carboxy group? This is a proton, always sigma. Major difference of those amino acids is the side chain R. Okay? That's a key. You need to know the basic structure of the amino acid. So, let's connect it. How they connect it? It's very interesting. It's a challenge for you to do it. Right here, connect it with NH. The then go C, CH3, H. What is this guy? If the R is H, it is, sorry, CH3, it is aldehyde. And this R is on the left side, so this is actually L aldehyde. Okay, we have one amino acid there. We're going to add some more. So what we do? Go down. Have an NH, then go here, we have a C, we have an H, okay? Then we're gonna have a C O O H. So we go here, we have a CH2, we have a CH2, we go here, we have a C O. What is this one? What is this one? What is this one? Dichrodamic acids. Dichrodamic acids. Okay, you may not remember this. Do you like a glutamic salt? It's very tasty. Make a soup. You add a glutamic salt there. It's tasted very well, but don't eat too much. Otherwise, you're going to have drinking a lot of water. So that's what time guess. Okay, what are we going to do? This guy here, when they connect it with another MH. Okay, then go here. We'll be H, C O O H. Then go here, CH2, CH2, CH2. Then go here, 
we'll have a C thing H. What is this type? Two amino there. Meso diamino polymeric acids. Just say EPA. Okay. Now what are we going to do later? Go oh, here. Yeah. NH, CH, CH3. Go here. What is that? Same thing like we did on the top right here. This is called D alanine. Then you go here. NH, CH, CH. H3, then O, O, H. What is that one? C, O, H. That's also D, L. But this last one, usually it will be cut. So, when you connect it like this, what it looks like? It is N, A, N connected with N, A, G then they connected with L alanine, connected with D glutamine, connected with DPA, diamino palmitic acids, then go from D alanine. This is one chain like this, okay? How about the other chain? Go here. NAM. N-acetylmuramic acid connected with n acetyl glucosiami So we go on the top, all the direction. Let's go here, okay? Will be L, alanine. Then go top, D, glutamine. Then go here, DPA. And go on the top is D, alanine. How they connected? We said modify the sugar, cross linked with amino acid. We already talked about the modified sugar. We already talked about the amino acid. How they connect it? It depends. If it is E. coli, gram negative bacteria, they just simply connect it like this. Very simple line connected. Is the first place of the D alanine connected with the third place of the DPA? Diamino palmitic acid. So it's a simple. How about to grant positive bacteria? If it's scapular conscious errors, what's it gonna be? It's a little bit complicated. What are they? First of all, add the any group right here. Give some charge. Second. You have this guy right here, is that right? <laughs> this is DPA. We have another amino acid, it's lysine. Looks very close to that. What does lysine look like? Do you remember? CH2, 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 then go on the top, NH3. We'll talk about this, okay? So, these two are very similar. For gram-positive bacteria, this is, will be a lysine. This will be a lysine right here. Again, another thing. We know gram-positive bacteria are peptidoglycanic sick, is that right? Another reason, the cross-link here, linked with glycine. What's the structure of glycine? <coughs> you should all know. It's the first one. C, C, O, O, H, H, and H. It's a non chiral amino acid. The other is not chiral, is that right? So, that's the difference. Now we're going to go back and talk about this glycine. So many CH2 and the NH3 at the top, we call this epicellum amino acid, is that right? Which 
product that has this one or not? When you propose it. Did you ever buy a meal proposal in your room and then three weeks later you didn't eat it or a couple of months later it turns yellow? You never drink, you never do milk powder, maybe just for milk. That's called the Maillard reaction because the amino acids reacted with sugar without enzyme. Okay, so the milk powder, we have a Maillard reaction and uh, that's lysine reacted with sugar without enzyme. So we call it a non enzyme, non enzymatic browning. That's what's the lysine for. And for gram positive bacteria, the same thing. Here I have a lysine. Okay? That's interesting. So that's a structure. Now, another thing we also want to talk about. We talk about the lysosome, is that right? We talk about lysosome, we talk about antiphagosome, all those things. What they are talking for. Is that a one for glycosidic bonds that connected with each other? So, lysine, lysosome, could be attacked there. And the penicillin could attack there. So, by here, you could be feeling about most of the antibiotics, they are actually working really good for gram-positive bacteria because they have this very complicated and very nice structure for the peptide glycan. And gram-negative bacteria, we draw the picture already, it's very thin. So it doesn't matter because it's not count too much, it's too thin. Gram-positive bacteria, it is sick. It's easy to be a focus to do the target. It's easy to be a subject. Another thing you also need to know, we will talk about this later, most of these antibiotics, they are more effective when the bacteria is growing, they are building the peptidoglycan. They are building this long chain because there are so many glycosidic bounces building. Then you attack it, you can crack it. Once it's already formed, sometimes it's difficult because the bacteria will have another way to repair it, which is we call antibiotic resistance. So when you see the structure here, you will be understanding that's a target attacking by antibiotics. And for gram-positive bacteria, it's very good because it's heavy. For gram-negative bacteria, it's very thin. And for gram-positive bacteria, when it's growing, it's even better because they're building them. Therefore, in the scientific area, we give them a name called, uh, this name I need to be double check. They call uh, <coughs> protoplast. Protoplast, if your targeting is gram-positive bacteria, the cell will start to cracking. And they call it a spectral plast. If the gram-negative bacteria, the cell wall, the pattern of the glycan starts to, to crack it. And both of these are going to be the function coming from the lysis lysosome. So that's what the lysosome is for. Okay? So this is the whole story. And I want to tell you, I want to show you this way, it's explained very well what this word means. And uh, for me, this is like a cartoon movie there, which is, you can understand, by yourself. Now, we want to test you those chemicals. That's your organic chemistry teacher's job to do, and that's your biochemistry person's job to do, how they connect it. But I will explain to you, because you will see, it's amazing for these things to connect it together, and to have the peptide of glycan. And this is well explained, the figure here. And you can see how they connect it. They connect the cross brink cross with each other and uh, with modified the sugar and the amino acid. So therefore, we move on to some of the easy stuff. We already talked about this. Gram-positive bacteria cell wall. Uh, we already draw, so I'm going to skip these steps. Plasma membrane, you have a space there, periplasmic space. Very heavy peptidoglycan have a tachoic gases on the top. 
And the function for tachoic acids is unknown. Okay, so we want to mention this. Uh, tachoic acids, uh, the function is unknown. It's unclear. We don't know what it's for. But uh, could it be the transferring? Could it be the support? We don't know exactly what it is. Gram negative bacteria. The cell membrane, uh, plasmic space, and you have a very thin peptide of glycan, an outer membrane. We want to talk really about is at uh, all the way top, at the place called LPS. Okay, you cannot see it, so I'm going to change LPS. Lipopolysaccharides. The lipopolysaccharides has been composed by three major components. I always draw like this. On the top is all antigen. Very thick area is called the core area. And the last tail is lipid state. So we want to talk about this. First of all, LPS lipopolysaccharides is a very tricky stuff for gram-negative bacteria because they will generate endotoxin. This is the reason why pathogenic E. coli, salmonella is a big problem because the LPS generates endotoxin. The second thing, the structure of the LPS is good for us sometimes to do the identification. Because you have an O antigen here. So we could name it after we do the serological typing. Therefore, it comes up with E. coli O157H7. This O is O antigen. A serological typing, 157. The core area doesn't matter. How about if it's A? Do you remember the gram-positive bacteria, gram-negative bacteria, the gram stain? Besides for cell wall theory, we have another theory we call the lipid theory. And I said for gram-negative bacteria, they have 10 to 15% of lipids. The major components is that lipid A. So that's something very interesting for this structure. Now let's go back to talk about this endotoxin. This endotoxin is really bad. But there is a good thing. It's reliable and sensitive to heat. So that's the reason if you have E. coli O157H7 salmonella in a chicken products, E. coli O157H7 in a beef products, what do you see the label? What the label will be saying? Surafric cooking, is that right? They will say cooking to internal 106 degree Fahrenheit, you will be safe. Why? Because the endotoxin is sensitive to the heat. Therefore, we call it food infection. But there is some toxin we cannot use heat to do the treatment. For example, the toxin coming from staphylococcus aureus, we call it exotoxin. The exotoxin is resistant to the heat. That's why you have a chicken salad, you eat it. If it's contaminated six hours later, you have a diarrhea, vomiting, ozone symptoms. So this is a very interesting part about it, the endotoxin. By here, you can see, using antibiotics, it's not going to work for this stuff very well. Otherwise, E. coli O157H7 will not be a problem. Which means, can we do like we are eating undercooked beef, then we have a diarrhea, or we just, uh, uh, just drink a cup of penicillin, then we can prevent. Before you go to restaurant, all the raw beef, you just drink a cup of penicillin, it's going to be the prevention. No, it's not going to work yet. Because the gram negative bacteria the LPS has the endotoxin, and they have a very thin peptide of gram So that means, tells you, most of the antibiotics is working very well for gram-positive bacteria. For gram-negative bacteria, not really. 
In other words, it tells us even for bacteria, those drugs are difficult to do. How about for the virus? It's more difficult to use drug to control. That's why you have all the problems for this COVID-19 issue. So when you learn in this class, it will be very well to understand it. Once you see this structure is more complicated, it's good for the passive control because there are some targets you can do. If some antibiotics doesn't work for the glyphosate virus, you can work for the side chain. And we'll talk about that later on when we move to antibiotic section. They are attacking for the side chain because it's complicated. If they don't have the side chain, that's only target. Okay. Another thing, good thing is that this is cell wall, and the human being and the animal do not have the cell wall, so it's safe, relatively safe for the human being. Okay. So that's something very uh, interesting. You can dig a little bit and know about. So this is ground negative bacteria. We talk about uh, uh, LPS, liver polysaccharides, pouring, all those things. And um, we had a small requirements for you. Can you get familiar with this? In the exam, we could do a label for you. Uh, we're gonna practice that before we have the real exam. Okay, we have some practice questions for you to label these uh, chemicals, these, uh, not, chem not chemicals, these structures. Because it's very important that we talk about the difference between ground positive and the ground negative bacteria. In case you don't understand, I have another slide right here. So that is actually the conclusion of the first and second slides, which tells you again the <coughs> difference between gram-positive cell wall and the gram-negative cell wall. So basically it's there. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the next section, capsule. Uh, capsule, I will go very quick. Uh, we already talked about the capsule stand, so don't wanna spend too much time here. Uh, Streptococcus ammonia have a heavy capsule. So Streptococcus ammonia have it. Another guy which is, has a very uh, strong capsule is Clemsel ammonia. Uh, but we will mention this, although both named by ammonia, Clemsel ammonia is a very light ammonia in the United States. Only responsible for 4%. We'll talk about that. So, what's the structure of the capsule? Polysaccharides. A sugar. And it's anti-fibrosome. Two little bacteria be survived there and the further penetrate into the host cell. And we can do a capsule stand, and obviously you see this is a very typical negative stand. We stand the background, we use nigrosin or Indian ink. So that's not a capsule, we talked about already. The song we mentioned a little bit. Just want to emphasize one more time. Okay, the ribosome. Bacteria has ribosome. Bacteria does not have lots of the other uh, machinery, but they have ribosome. Now the ribosome is a place for what? For protein, for translation, generate protein. And uh, for bacteria cell, it has two units. The large unit is 50S, small unit is 30S, However, always remember, it's not a simple mass. When they add up together, it's 70 S. Why? Because this S is a Vandenberg unit. It means, it measures the velocity, or we say speed, of precipitation. Uh, when you get the isolation, you can do a high tunnel uh, ultra centrifuge. So you will see the speed when they concentrated or precipitated at the bottom. So people can measure that in the Savannahberg units. So that's why it's not add up together. Okay, it's a 50s, 30s. The whole unit is 70s. What are the side units inside of the 50s? It is 23. S or INA and it's 5 S or INA. Okay. How about the series? The 60 S or INA. What is the function of the 16 S or INA? 
to recognize the SD sequence. Is that right? Let's try the Gano sequence. The sequence is very conservative for the AGG, AGG. We'll talk about that later. Okay. Now, we also want to mention how many bacteria, how many protein units for this? Uh, the top units might be like 30 ish, bottom 10 to 15, sometimes 10, it depends on the bacteria. Okay? So that's for the ribosome. Another thing I also want to mention is that. The 16S RNA could be recognized, some of the bacteria in their V6, V8 has a very conservative sequence, universal for all the bacteria. This is where it comes from, a name you heard about all the time. If you're working with uh, health science division department, health science section for the research, that was 16S RNA biotechnology. Uh, you heard about that, some of you. I know some, not all of them. That's where the 16 SRNA comes from. Because it could re recognize a very conservative sequence of the bacteria. Or some of the other microorganisms. Okay, that's for the 16 SRNA. Now, next one nucleus. Uh, this one we have to move. We want to talk something. Uh, Nucleids, basically, we talk about is RNA, DNA, chromosome, and the plasmids, all those uh, information. Um, Nucleids. Um, you want to talk about chromosome? Uh, first of all, bacterial chromosome. Uh, SOME, chromosome. Bacterial chromosome is very long. It is actually is twisted. Or we say folded. Now, why is it can folded? Because in the chromosome, there is some of a nuclear associated protein. Those proteins, the amino acid is positively charged. And the DNA sequence of a bacteria is actually most of the negatively charged. You know that. So they could combine 